Bibpuri is a small and remote village in Raigad and it is also a central railway station. Keshav Rao Pradhan hailed from this village. Though he was not affluent, yet he owned a house and farmlands. To make both ends meet, he worked as a bill collector in a private financing company. His home was next to his farm and it was a rather desolate area. But it was a tranquil place. It had a beautiful flowering garden. It was surrounded by abundant luscious trees. In the compound next to his home, there is a Sai Baba temple which was built later. There is a Tulsi Vrindavan as well as aged trees. In the perimeter of the garden, there is an old banyan tree, a peepal tree, two neem trees and audumbar tree. All these are holy trees. Before he met Baba, Pradhan had a great deal of disrespect and contempt for saints. His dear friend was devoted to Baba. Once, he and his family were going to Shirdi. They repeatedly requested Pradhan to accompany them, but he declined. Finally, they asked Pradhan to give them the pleasure of his company. They assured him that he would not be compelled to bow to Baba. Pradhan agreed to do so and go with them only after he was very certain that he would not be coerced to bow at Baba's feet. Neither would he be forced to drink Baba's Paddhatir as the very thought repulsed him. Finally, he agreed as he thought, I will sit in the room while the others go to worship Baba. They reached Shirdi and his friend requested Pradhan to accompany him. All of them went to the Dwarkamai, which was crowded. So Pradhan gladly sat in the corner, far away from the Sanctum Sanctorum. Gradually, the crowd became less and the Dwarkamai was empty. His friend was in the Sanctum Sanctorum worshipping Baba. Bring that irresponsible, contemptuous rascal here, ordered Baba, pointing to Pradhan. His friend brought him before Baba, who was still shouting. Then Baba gave him chapter and verse about his behavior, his contempt for ascetics and saints. While Baba was shouting, Pradhan got glimpse of Baba's omnipresence and his knowledge of every passing thought. Pradhan's soul was touched by Baba's word and his contempt for saints vanished. At that very moment, he became an ardent devotee of Baba. Pradhan had made a huge bill collection and had stuffed the money into both of his pockets. Baba then ordered him to empty his pockets. At that time, Pradhan was in a trance and he took out all the money from one pocket and placed the money before Baba. Then Baba asked him to empty the other pocket. Pradhan emptied the other pocket and now he had placed all the money that he had collected before Baba. Then Baba ordered him to leave Shirdi. His concerned friend said, You should better leave Shirdi right now as per Baba's orders. Pradhan was in a dilemma as he was left with no money. Neither did he have the money for the return journey nor had he sufficient funds to pay the bill collecting agency. It was then that Baba's divine sword started unfolding. An unknown devotee agreed to pay all his expenses for his return journey. Pradhan assured him that he would repay the money by money order as soon as he reached home. Upon reaching home, he sent a money order to the compassionate devotee. The undelivered money order came back stating that such a person was not traceable. The second divine spot was that the owner of the agency informed him that they were extremely pleased by his successful bill collection of such a huge amount and that it was deposited in the head office. Needless to say, Pradhan's faith in Baba became unshakable. As the days passed, his financial conditions started improving. 
and he found peace of mind. He started making frequent visits to Shirdi. On every visit, he requested Baba to come to Bhipuri. On one of his visits, his persistence paid off and Baba said, I'll come. Pradhan was extremely stubborn and adamant by nature and taking advantage of Baba's words, on every subsequent visit, he said, Baba, you agreed to come to Bhipuri, so when are you coming? He persisted and pestered Baba to come to Bhipuri. But this he did with a great deal of faith and devotion. On one of his visits, Baba gave him a bas relief image of himself and said, Here, take this and keep this in your home. Truly believe that this is me and do not come to Shirdi hereafter. Pradhan took the image home, but he thought that Baba was joking. So he went to Shirdi again. As soon as he stepped into the sanctum sanctorium, Baba said, I am in your home. Do not come to Shirdi again. Go back to Bhipuri, erect a temple and install my bas relief image in it. Perform all the festivals there and do not come back here for that is your Shirdi. Now leave at once and go home. Thus Pradhan stopped going to Shirdi. Finally, Pradhan obeyed Baba's orders and constructed a temple next to his home. Once at midnight, he heard the temple doors open. He and his family went to see who it was. Everyone was surprised at what they saw. Baba entered the temple and closed the door behind him. Then at 3 a.m. the door opened and Baba left. He narrated this wonderful event to all his friends and relatives who also came to behold this wonderful scene. Pradhan's Unique Faith in Baba Pradhan had such immense faith in Baba that if a scorpion or other poisonous insects were found in the home or courtyard, he fearlessly took them and placed them before Baba's idol and said, Why are you troubling me so needlessly? Why have you put these poisonous creatures after me? He would do ritualistic worship in the temple and conducted all the major festivals. This he did with his own income and invited all the villagers for Arti. He literally forced the villagers to do kirtan at his home and gave them tea, snacks, lunch after that. He gave them Baba's food offerings to take home so they started coming reluctantly. He was sure that Baba would fulfill his wishes. Therefore, his wish became more adamant and stubborn. Pradhan got up early in the morning and after worshipping Baba, he stood in front of the idol and pestered Baba. One day, he stood in front of the idol and said, Baba, you have come to stay here. Don't you think that there should be beautiful flower garden so I can offer flowers to you? Every day I do your puja with a few flowers. I don't like this at all. So why can't you provide me with beautiful fragrant flowers? Then he went and got saplings of jai and jui and planted them. He looked after them with a great deal of love. The result was that after four or five years there were many flowers, so much so that the neighbours and the villagers helped themselves to as many flowers as they wanted. One day, he stood before Baba and said, Baba, you know that the river is far away. I need fresh water for your puja. Does it please you that I have to go so far to fetch it? Now don't you think that the water should be nearby? Having said this, he set about digging a small well near the temple. And Baba saw to him that he got one big vessel full of water every single day. Once Pradhan was in a terrible crisis in his life and it seemed never ending. Nor could he find a solution. At that juncture, Baba gave him Sakshatkar and patting his back said, Don't be afraid. 
I am here to protect you. Pradhan considered the place that Baba gave Sakshatkar as very sacred. He did not want anyone to walk on it. To preserve its sanctity, he built a Tulsi Vrindavan over it. Pradhan lived in the outskirts of the village. The villagers believed that outside the home, the area was inhabited by evil spirits. If a wayfarer was to use that road at night, he would become confused and hallucinated. This resulted in his walking round and round and not finding his path home. When Pradhan was at home, every evening at dusk he lit a lamp on the lamp post outside. This kept the evil spirits away. Baba knew that his financial condition was low. So, if he made frequent visits to Shirdi, his expenses would mount. Even if it were only a day trip, he would have to be away from home for about three days. On those days, there would be no lamp for the wayfarers. They would needlessly cause trouble for them, as a lamp that was lit acted like lighthouse in the sea. The other reason was obvious. If Baba took up residence in his home, the evil spirits would attain Satgati. Nor could any other evil spirit dare to come anywhere near the village. This was the reason for Baba's readily agreeing to go to Bipuri. Pradhan passed away in 1939. But before he left, he passed the management of the temple to his sons and son-in-law, A.V. Gupta, who was an ardent devotee of Baba. The temple soon became famous in the neighboring villages and in Mumbai and other places. As the devotees used to flock there, there was an expansion plan and it was undertaken. This plan was halted for a while due to lack of funds. Then a devotee named Narayan Purohit started doing Parayan of the Sri Sai Satcharita to find a solution. On the fourth day, Baba appeared in his dream and said, Where is my Dunimai? There is no Duni here, then how can it be Shirdi? When Baba gives an order, he finds a solution. The Duni was led by A. R. Walewalkar or Dev Baba, the grandson of Hemarpan. The total expenses were borne by Kumar Sen Samant. This is a must see pilgrimage for all Baba's devotees. Recently, the Trust has decided to tear down the old building and construct a new temple. Dev Baba does Parayan of the Satcharita at Bhipuri Road. The ties between Baba and Dev Baba were deep and immeasurable. Dev Baba often went to Bhipuri Temple to do Parayan of the Sri Sai Satcharita. On one occasion, he completed the Parayan at 11 a.m. The villagers knew that it was the last day of reading, so they gathered at the temple to receive prasad. On completion of the Parayan, a grand feast was offered to everyone. Soon it was 12 o'clock and the Aarti was performed. The villagers stayed on to attend Aarti. Although completely immersed in the Aarti, Dev Baba felt a very powerful spiritual presence besides him. He opened his eyes and looked around. A tall man was standing next to him. He was dressed like a shepherd, but he looked quite different from the rest of the villagers. At that time, Mantra Pushpanjali or the offering of flowers to the deity was completed. Everyone went forward to offer flowers to the idol. The shepherd, however, stood right where he was and quietly let the flowers fall on his own feet. Dev Baba saw this and realized that Baba had blessed him by appearing for the Aarti on the day his Parayan was completed. With utter devotion, he prostrated before him. The source is Sai Prasad Magazine, Special Issue, Dasera, 1993.